Hello, it is time for math class and it is February the 3rd that you'll be watching this 2016 and we'll be studying more on sequences. We have observed a way to represent a sequence in, in general is a letter with a subscripted variable. So this tells me I'm looking at the first term, the second, the third, the fourth, and so on. They are in a uh, special order. There's a, an order to a sequence. If these numbers are, were scattered all over the place, we wouldn't know which was first and we would have no idea on the order. So a sequence is an ordered set of numbers. When we have a special sequence, say that we add a certain number to get from this one to this one, and we add the same number to get from this to this and so on. That has a special name. It's called an arithmetic sequence. That word looks like arithmetic, but it's, uh, it's the ad adjective form, so we call it arithmetic sequence. And the arithmetic sequence that it, you can understand it better by looking at an example. So say we start with 7 and go to 11 and then 15. What was added to each to get the next? Well you see 7, we added 4 to get to 11 and 4 more to get to 15. So we can quickly see it'll go to 19 and then 23 and so on. If I had given you that problem and ask you what the nth term was, you would have to come up with a generator or a rule using n, recognizing that this is the first term, so what would I do to 1 to get 7? Some algebraic rule, and the same rule would get from 2 to 11 and 3 to 15. You'll see that uh, 4 times each number plus 3 will do it. So the generator, we call that also the nth term. If you notice, if you put in a 1, do you not generate a 7? When you put in a 2, do you not generate an 11? I'm not sure if you notice that pattern, but when it's an arithmetic sequence, I can show you a method to always get this answer without much uh, ado. So, all right. Before we leave this sequence, we'll train a little bit on it. And when we have a, I mentioned that you're going to add a number to each term to get the next term. Well, that number, that special number, is called the common difference. And if you subtract any number from the previous number, you will get the same. 23 minus 19 is 4. 19 minus 15 is 4, 4, 4. So we call that the common difference, and in this case the common difference is 4, and we indicate that usually with just the plain D. So whenever you see D, you know we're talking about the common difference. All right, so let's practice with these thoughts. Let's say that I am going to Take the, I'm going to tell you that a sub 1 is 2. These are all like little puzzles to figure out. And the common difference is negative 5. Could you please generate, say, four terms of the sequence? This is an arithmetic sequence because it has this common difference. So we're going to start with the first term, 2. If the common difference is negative 5, I will add a negative 5 to 2 and find the next term to be negative 3, to which I will add a negative 5 and another negative 5. So I wanted to show you this one because I want you to understand that common differences can be negative. Just adding a negative number. What would be the generating function or the nth term for this one? What could I do to 1? to get a 2. And the same rule applies to the 2 to get a minus 3, and so on. The answer is 7 minus 5n. Let's see if it works. When I put in a 1 for n, I get 7 minus 5, which is 2. When I put a 2 for n, 
I get 7 minus 10, which is negative 3. And you can verify for yourself that the others work as well. <coughs> so I'm sure you're wanting to know how I can generate this and always get it without much ado. All right, before I tell you, I would like to show you one more sequence. 1, 4, 9, 16. Can you see what's coming next? 25, 36, 49. So you can see the generating function is n squared. So when you see that, let's see what the common difference is. When we go from 1 to 4, the common difference is 3. But when we go from 4 to 9, the common difference, yep, it's not common at all. The difference is 5 and then 7. So we definitely see a pattern coming out of this, but it's just wanted to show you that you can identify this sequence as not arithmetic. So this is not an arithmetic sequence because you have to add the same number each time to get the next number for an arithmetic sequence. So this fails. Epic fail. Alright, so let me explain to you how to get these generating functions when it's arithmetic without much ado. So we will, let's find an example to work with and then from that we should be able to do any of them. Say the first term a sub 1 is 4 and the common difference is 3. In this case we are going to generate a few of the numbers but I'm going to generate them in such a way that you can see clearly what's happening. So the first term is a 4. The second term is going to be a 4 plus the common difference of 3. And then the next term is going to be 7 plus a 3 and so on. When I do that, 4 plus a 3, 7 plus a 3, 10 plus a 3, so on. So, let me show you another way of looking at that. Here, when I do the 4, I'm just going to say, well, that's a sub 1. It has to be known or calculated in some way. The second term is going to be the first term plus the common difference. So, in this case, 3. So, this was the first term. So, I'll just say 4. So, this is the first term. This is the second term. All right, first, second. All right, now I'm going to take the previous term, which is a 4 plus a 3, and I'm going to add another 3. So this is the third term. And we'll do one more and see if you can pick out the pattern. So the third term is going to be the first term Oh, the term previous to it, 4 plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, another time. So that's the fourth term. And that's going to go on like that. So what I would like you to notice is a pattern. So what if we get up here to the nth term, which is what I'm trying to teach you to do on these kind. So it's always going to have the first term. And that will be, in this case, a 4 plus the common difference, which is 3, used how many times? Well, in the first term, we did not use the common difference at all. In the second term, we used the common difference once. In the third term, we used the common difference twice. And on the fourth term, we used the common difference three times. So on the nth term, we're going to use that common difference n minus 1 times. All right, so when we multiply that out, so this is going to be a sub n equals 4 plus 3 times n minus 1. So we get a sub n equals 4 plus 3n, when I distribute, minus 3. Or I get a sub n equals 4 minus 3, which is 1, plus 3n. Let's see if that does generate these numbers. 
So now I'm saying the nth term is 1 plus 3n. So when I put a 1 in, do I get a 4? I do. When I put a 2 in, does it generate a 7? It does. 3, and so it's working. All right. So let's give, let me give you a formula. That was a specific case. So let's go to the general case. So in the general sequence, we have a sub 0. Oops. That's only if you're told to start at 0. All right, so a sub 1. And the second term is going to be a sub 1 plus the common difference. And the third term is going to be a sub 1 plus the common difference twice. Because it's take the term before it and add the common difference. And the fourth term is going to be using the common difference three times. And so on. So the nth term is going to be a sub 1 plus the common difference which is D used how many times? So this is D times 3 on the fourth term. This was D times 2 on the third term. This was D times 1 on the second term. So it's always 1 below the number of term that you're in. So the formula for the nth term, and this will get you through so many problems, is this. So the nth term, this is only for the arithmetic, arith, a rat in Tommy's house might eat Tommy's ice cream. All right. All right, I need to shut down part one, and we'll come back to this arithmetic sequence. In an arithmetic sequence, this is the nth term. It's the first term plus the common difference times the number of term minus 1. It works every time. All right, be back.